here's a super quick preview of what we're going to be working towards. It's a five part series. Two of the videos are about 10 minutes and the rest are about five. So let's get started. Mm. Okay, so we're going to create a terminal in Unity. Here I have an empty scene and a couple assets that I have actually created before I started recording. One of them is it's just a 64 pixel by 64 pixel white square that you can create in paint or GIMP or Photoshop. We're just going to use it as the background image for our terminal because if you use the default panel background image, you're going to have some bleed through around the edges of the image. The other thing I brought into Unity is a monospace font. Now, monospace just means that every single character in the font is the same width. So capitals, lowercase, everything, uh, symbols are all going to be the exact same width. And this is important for a terminal, especially if you want to draw out um, ASCII images and titles, uh, because that way they will all line up properly. If you want to download a monospace font, you can go to Google Fonts or just search monospace fonts on Google. Um, but once you're at Google Fonts, you can sort using these categories here by only monospace font and in this case I'm using Roboto or Roboto Roboto Mono. But you're welcome to use anything that you want. Just download the family and bring in the TTF or the OTF file into Unity and stick it in a fonts folder. So we'll start off by creating a new UI element of type canvas this is just going to be called UI and then we're going to create a new panel underneath it and we'll call this our terminal. Make sure that when you bring in your texture you've selected that the texture type is 2D and UI and that way you'll be able to use it within the UI. So with that set we can come back to our terminal and change our default background image to this white square. From here, I'm just going to set the terminal to black and give it full opacity. Eventually what we'll do is we'll create a nice color scheme using a color palette that we'll find online to color our terminal nicely. Um, or you can use the sort of default color so it looks like an old, ugly MS-DOS terminal. Second thing we want to do is just duplicate this terminal panel with Control D and make it a child of the terminal. We'll call this the command line container. This is going to contain every command line that, that we enter. So we'll want to create a vertical layout group within this command line container so that as things are instantiated they all stack vertically in the container. Leave it as upper left child alignment. We can give the spacing between the command lines maybe five units and we will not force child expansion. Uh, this, is, this just means if we have, say, two command lines in our command line container, if we had height force expand, those two command lines heights would be forced to take up the whole height of the container, which we do not want. We'll pad the top with about five units, and that should be good. From here, we are ready to create our actual command line prefabs. So we will create one here. We'll start again with a panel. We will give it a height of maybe 30 pixels or units and make sure that it is aligned in the top left. We'll create a text object which we will also a line in the top left. Make sure that it has vertical alignment here. We'll change our font to our monospace font. So with that set up, we can change this color to white. All right, we'll change our font size to 22. And we'll want things to overflow. And it just is going to allow the text to go outside the bounding box if it does become too large. Um, 
It's better if it goes outside and looks wrong than if it becomes completely hidden, just because that way you can debug easier, you know where your text went. Uh, lastly, I'm going to add, uh, let's see, a little bit of padding to my sample directory line. We'll add a horizontal layout group here and give left padding maybe 15 pixels. Don't force child expansion. And we'll call this our directory text. In here, we can say something like the name of our game. Perfect. We'll duplicate this. Since there's a horizontal layout group, it's going to stack horizontally. And we will say this was the user input. We'll set the width of this to be quite large. And there we have our first input line. So we'll call this the user input text. This can be duplicated. And there is a problem here. So that the height is zero. Let's set it to 30. Is that too big? I don't think so. Perfect. We will change this to be sample response line. We don't need directory text because that is not returned when the terminal responds. Call this the response text and say the terminal has responded. It doesn't really matter what you type here because this is all going to be changed at runtime. When you instantiate one of these prefabs that we're creating, uh, this text is going to be you know, dynamically updated depending on uh, what you put in your interpreter code. I like the response text to be a different color. So I'll use like an orange. Looks good. And lastly, we can duplicate this sample directory line with control D and call this the user input line. Now we will remove this user input text. We'll right click our user input line, add a input field. Obviously, we don't want things styled like this, um, but we'll start by just making the width quite large so that we have a lot of space to type. The actual source image for the input field we will want to set to none. Then the color we will make entirely transparent. We will expand this and delete the placeholder. And in text, let's set our font size to 22, change it to our Roboto Mono font. You can't type in here. Uh, well, you can, but it will just automatically be deleted. So there's no point in typing anything in there. Vertically align the text, set to overflow once again and we will give our input text some sort of bright green color. Um, we can change the caret width to be very, very large in the scripting API. I think there's a maximum here in the editor of five, but we can set it really to be anything that we want. And you can customize this however you like. Let's change your selection color when you select the text um, and how fast the caret blinks. So if we just test this out really quickly, here we have a terminal and we can type, this is my input line. Awesome. So that will about do it for the first part of this. In the next part, we're going to turn these lines into prefabs and write a script that's going to allow us to um, dynamically instantiate them as we type in stuff into our terminal.